What is up, YouTube? This is CZAC, back to show you another assembly or how-to video. Today we're going to replace the battery in this 4th Gen iPod Touch. I'm going to show you the tools that we're going to use to do this. Uh, we do need some solder and a soldering iron as the battery is soldered into the interior of this iPod Touch. We we'll also need a Phillips screwdriver, a uh, small tip, a spudger to help us pry up um, a back portion underneath the LCD, and an opening tool to pry the LCD off of the iPod. We'll also be needing a heat gun, uh, which you'd use on a low setting. You can use a hair dryer, but I find a heat gun works much better. We're going to heat the edges up around the outside of the iPod and then use this opening tool to go ahead and pry the LCD up to get at the inner workings of the iPod Touch. So we're going to go ahead and heat the LCD up. We don't want to get it too hot, just enough to loosen the glue to the point where we can get our pry tool in and undo the LCD from the mid chassis. Alright, that should be good. Don't need a ton of heat, um, but we do want to get it warm enough. Um, go ahead and slide the pry tool in between the LCD and the black bezel. Go ahead and start prying the glue off. Be nice and gentle as you go around the bezel and be careful of the home button. Uh, we don't want to damage that as we start to pry the screen off. See the bottom portion where the, the black uh, larger area is? You can put your pry tool in a little bit deeper here. Um, on the side, so you want to make sure that you don't go in too far to damage your LCD. You want to be careful around the top area of the LCD as well, as there are some ribbon cables up there, uh, LCD connectors. So you see as we get down to the bottom, I'll stick the pry tool in just a little bit further, make sure that we get the separation of the glue at the bottom. It does take a few seconds to pry this off. Uh, I don't uh, recommend that you hurry. Make sure you have a lot of patience in this portion. This, this is one of the trickiest parts. All right, we're going to go ahead and start to separate the LCD from the frame. Now, right here at the top, um, usually the Wi-Fi connector here at the top will stick to the screen. And there is a connector at the top for the LCD on the interior as well. It looks like the Wi-Fi connector didn't stick to this one, but normally it does. So you want to make sure that you are careful with it. And uh, I can see the, uh, there's a screw holding it down, so it will tear if you're not careful. Now, there is a ribbon cable right here as well, which attaches to the underside of the motherboard, uh, which we will not be undoing uh, as we'd have to remove the entire board. So uh, please be careful with that during your disassembly. The next step is to go ahead and remove the screws. Now these are different sizes. These three right here along the sides uh, are shorter, so I would make sure that you understand where you take each screw out from and keep them in that order. Go ahead and start disassembling the screws, or take removing the screws out. Now sometimes the screws do kind of get stuck. They're kind of put in with a, a, a Loctite type um, substance. You may need to use a pair of tweezers to help kind of pull them off of this uh, silver retainer board here. tweezers that we're going to use to pull it out. Sometimes they're a little sticky from the glue that they use to put these in. So you want to make sure that you're nice and gentle when you're pulling them out. Don't lose them. And make sure you understand which area they came from on this iPod Touch. 
And this screw just does not want to come out for me. Not that big of a deal, it'll come out when we pry that board up. I'm going to be very gentle with this ribbon cable right here. Uh, this is the volume control button. Sometimes it's stuck to the underside of this board. I have to pry right here to give uh, some separation. There's a control board right next to it uh, that you can also kind of push down as well. We'll go ahead and just go across the sides here. At the bottom, there's a lot of adhesive as well. If you push your pry tool in just right here at the bottom, you can separate it from uh, another board that's sitting right here. you'll see it start to kind of come up and loosen a little bit. Pry right here for just a little bit longer. Some extra separation in there. A screw came out, so we're going to go ahead and pull that off there real fast. All right, you can see the retainer is starting to pull up for us. It's still stuck down here at the bottom, so I'm going to pry just a little bit more. You always want to be gentle whenever you're you're working with adhesive stuck down onto a, like a main board. Um, it does hinge out, so you want to lift up and pull out, and that'll go ahead and show us our battery, which is what we're trying to get to here at the bottom. Uh, if you've noticed, there's three solder points down here at the bottom, or the top of the battery, where the cable is soldered to the main board. So we're going to heat up our soldering iron and we're going to loosen these. Now this is the first time that I've ever done this uh, so it may take me some time to get it out and figure out what the best way to remove it is. Maybe you can learn from my trial and error here. We're going to go ahead and loosen the battery up. Uh, it is adhesed down uh, so you can see I'm using a nice flat pry tool. You want to be very careful there's some copper foil underneath it. Um, you don't want to rip it so if you pry slowly across the side, you can start to pull it up, and then you can pry towards the bottom of the battery and then on top of the copper right here to make sure that it's not going to tear when you pull the battery up. Alright, we're going to be nice and gentle as we start to loosen it. Oh, fell back down. Pry it up just a little bit more. We want the battery to become free so when we do remove the solder it's nice and easy to pull out and we do have a little bit of give in the uh, battery cable as well alright there we go now we can see the battery is completely free Let's see if my soldering iron is hot enough It's not. I'm going to try melting some solder with it here just real quick to see if it'll uh, hit its heating point, which it did. So now we can go ahead and get started. I like to use tweezers at this point to try to pull up on the cable a little bit. You want to make sure that you're only applying the soldering iron to the solder on this cable and nowhere else on the board. see it turn from kind of a grayish color to a brighter silver, meaning that it's been melted. And it took me a few seconds to realize that there's like a waxy cover on top of this solder that helps keep it from melting. Uh, so you're going to want to make sure you remove that, kind of scrape it off, and that'll give you an easier time pulling uh, or melting the solder to pull the ribbon cable from the board start from the other side and see if we can't get a little bit more leverage this way. A little bit of wax I'm going to pull off here.
our stuff on there, remove it so we get a better heat point for it. This is being really tricky. I really don't want to damage the board because this iPod works and is fully functional. Careful to burn yourself, like I just did. That was awesome. All right, starting to make a little bit of progress with the cable. I wiggle it free of the little tiny solder that was still left on there. Reheat it to pull back up again. And the reason why I'm showing you this is to show you how difficult it can be to pull the solder off. And then it's not super simple to do. With a little bit of patience, you can definitely make it happen. And this battery is completely dead, so it's not worth me trying to save. And I start to realize that I might be able to get a little bit better leverage on the cable if I just cut this and pull the battery out. And there's that copper foil I was talking about that you don't want to damage underneath the battery. got it a much easier time pulling on this cable to pull the solder. Second point done, it's just stuck on by a tiny piece of solder, so we're just going to wiggle it to free it. on our last solder point here. Now putting the solder on for me is much easier than trying to remove it. My goal here is just to not damage the board underneath. There we go. Perfect. Now that the battery is completely free, what we want to do is actually work on our replacement battery. Now it's much easier to solder the battery down to the board if you prep the battery with a little bit of solder on the under points. Now if you look at it the way that the ribbon cable attaches to the top, it'll fold over on itself. Now you do want to heat the uh, connector up that you're going to be putting the solder on just a little bit with the iron and then push down on the solder with it to see if it's a little tiny bubble of solder. You don't want to overdo it. You do not want these contacts to uh, still together with solder on the underside. So just a tiny bit. Perfect. Now onto our second one. So put the soldering iron onto the point and then put your solder onto the tip and let the solder kind of run down. Now you can see that 
all three points have it. Now this part is also a little tricky, which is getting the cable back under the board here. Um, there is a point where it should slide in right here, but normally if you prep your battery with a little bit of solder on it, uh, it's hard to get back underneath because it's now it's a little bit larger in size. You can pull up on the board just a little bit to give yourself a little bit of flex and room to put it through. And you can curve and bend the cable without damaging it. to bend it just a little bit here and push down my solder so it's not as thick and easier to get in. I'm going to use this to give myself a little bit of leverage underneath the board. See it'll flex just a little bit. Not too much, just enough to give it a little bit higher opening. Starting to make a little bit of progress. Excellent, there we go. Now we want to reseat the battery up to the very top. You want the top portion, the thinner, we're kind of with the ribbon cables that to slide underneath the bottom board. I'm going to give it a good push to make sure that the battery gets resealed onto the connecting or the existing glue. Alright, the next thing we're going to do is solder these three points back down. Try to make sure they line up before you start your soldering. And you can find something to hold the cable with as you do it. Um, might be a little bit easier. Just try not to burn yourself with your soldering iron. Now, putting the solder on is much easier than removing it. Once you see it liquefy, you want to pull your iron off. Just make sure that all three points are connected. You want to make sure that you did not use too much solder that it goes anywhere else on the board. You want the connectors to be separate, so that way you do not short out your iPod. Right. The battery is now reconnected in there. We're going to go ahead and put our plate back in. Remember, it does work like a hinge. So you want to slide the two back slots in and then push down. It will almost kind of clip into place. Make sure that you get everything nice and snug. It should be held down with a little bit of glue still. Uh, the glue is usually pre still pretty tacky. I'm going to go ahead and put our screws back in. We kept in the correct order, so we know they go at within the iPod.
I like to do these three screws first because they're, they're the same length. They're a little bit smaller than the remaining screws. Let's make sure I don't put them in the wrong spot. You also want to make sure that everything is flush as it was when it first came out as the iPod will be readhesing itself to the bezel as well as the bottom portion of this frame. If you did bend it when you were removing it, make sure you bend it back into its correct shape. That way your LCD will sit nice and flush when you reassemble it. Now this next part is a little bit tricky as well. You need to reconnect your LCD connector here at the top. Now it does, uh, it is a little bit longer than it looks. If you pull on it, you can get some slack off of the cable. Just don't pull too hard. Make sure you seat this very well. If your display does not turn back on once you uh, put this back down, it means that you did not seat it correctly. There's also a hinge at the top of the iPod Touch. So you want to take the screen and slide it up to the top and then put the bottom on. Give it a lot of pressure to make sure that you re-adhese all the glue. Now if there's not enough or it's not tacky enough you can use some 3M glue or some 3M double-sided tape to put it down. Maybe a little bit of heat to re-adhere the glue as well from your heat gun. And that is how you do it. Uh, iPod touch battery installation. Uh, please uh, like the video if you found it helpful, and you guys have a great day.